Hi guys, welcome back to Moat Cottage Home City. I'm Elisa and in today's video I'm going to show you what I've been up to the last few months on the homestead over the autumn, winter and now we're in spring. This video is mainly for those of you who watch my channel all the time and have an interest in what's going on behind the scenes when I'm not filming. There's something to harvest every day at Moat Cottage. In autumn, the summer veggie garden is rewarding us for our efforts. I need to water daily as we don't get much rain and it's usually very hot. You might remember that back in the summer I had to prune my tomato plants back because they were covered with all sorts of pests. Well, I waited a few weeks in between doing that and they did grow back beautifully without the pests. So next time I won't wait a few weeks deciding on what to do. I'll cut them back straight away because I did get a lot of fruit from them after they grew back. It was definitely worth it. After you harvest all the food, the food needs to be preserved, whether it's frozen, dehydrated, fermented, pickled, water bath canned and pressure canned. Then there's those one-off problems on the homestead that you have to solve. This palm tree got out of control. I used to have four of them and Damon cut them down a few years ago with an axe on the haystack. And that was very successful, although the last one was just too big to cut down that way. So finally, I've got the professionals out to cut down the last one. They dropped it exactly where it needed to go and they were gone in less than an hour. It's so good having that cocoa palm tree gone. I don't have to be worrying about branches or seed pods falling on my head or my guests' heads or even my ducks and chickens. It was a real concern, especially when they wanted to scratch underneath. I ended up having to put wire around the bottom of the palm tree so that the chickens and ducks couldn't even go in that place because it was just too dangerous. Now the roots will die off and I'll be able to plant more things around that area and also put a fence post in, which is something I've been wanting to put in on the opposite side of where the gate is and haven't been able to due to roots. Also, the cocoa palm won't be stealing all the water in the summertime and the fruit tree should grow better and produce more fruit. Preserving the autumn harvest is an essential practice for homesteaders ensuring that you have access to fresh, nutritious produce throughout the year. It's important to preserve the incoming food when it's fresh and at its best, so there's no spoiled food or wasted food. There is something so rewarding about turning a seed into a plant and then into jars of food. And I love watching pressure canned food when it comes out of the canner and it's bubbling away. It's such a beautiful sight. In the autumn, Nikki was heading off for university and she was taking Jinx with her because Jinx is her cat. And we've had Jinx here for a few years now since our other cat Jasper passed away, which was a cat we had for 17 years. So I decided it was time for me to get a cat. It was gonna be an indoor cat and I decided to get an adult cat from the shelter. So I'd been looking for quite a few months and finally one turned up that I just knew was the perfect fit for me. Her name is Mimi and she loves cuddles and would bring warmth and affection into my home is what some of the brief was. And so I applied for her and while I was waiting to hear a response from the shelter, I bought a name tag, I got the cage out, put it in the car ready to go and pick up the cat even though I hadn't had a response and the next morning I went and started to warm the car up even though I still hadn't heard and while I was sitting in the car warming the car up to go over to pick up the cat that I hadn't had a response for they rang me and said I had the cat and I could have an appointment to meet the cat if I wanted and then I could make my decision once once I was there and had met the cat and so I did I went over and obviously fell in love straight away and I got to bring Mimi home and I adopted her and she was a 15 month old cat 
I'm at the shelter and I've just met Mimi. We've spent some time together with her walking around in the room and now she's in the crate ready to go home and we're just waiting for the paperwork to get done before we drive home. And she is fantastic. She is just full of personality and love and she'll come when she's called and she's just really good value. So I'm really pleased that I adopted her and she is a great companion now that Nikki and Jinx have gone off to university. When she first arrived, we just locked ourselves in the laundry shower room, which is where her food station will be and she's getting to know the area. She's a little bit timid, obviously, to start with but that won't last long. She got to spend a few weeks with Jinx and they got to know each other and they had a few things in common, like hunting flies, and they bonded quite well. Mimi also likes water and snuggling, but you have to be careful not to sit on her because she does blend in. Winter is a great time to focus on the indoor projects on the homestead, such as soap making. I love using natural ingredients from my garden. Today I'm making orange soap and I'm using orange peel that I've dehydrated and ground up and I put that in my soap mix as well as some pure essential orange oil. I'm using the fancy moulds today because these soaps will be for gifts or guests when they stay. So the pattern's a little bit more intricate and fancy. There's winter bread making. This is flatbread. When the orange soap was fully cured, it was time to remove it from the moulds. These are my little guest soaps. And the bigger ones are gift soaps. And the pattern's worked out quite well, despite it being a very intricate pattern. So I'm happy with how they've turned out. Winter at Moat Cottage probably doesn't look like winter to most of you. It only gets down to minus 6 degrees Celsius. That's 21.2 Fahrenheit. And quite often we're in a big dark cloud, so you have to make the most of the sunny days when they do come. Today I'm collecting some mussels for the fish pond. I only need a couple. We had a bit of rain the other day, so I do have to go in a bit deeper than I normally would because they're not on the edges of the pond. However, I don't want to step too far in because otherwise I'll be up to my waist in freezing cold water because the ground drops away quite suddenly in the dam and you can't see because the water's too dark and I'm not a big fan of the cold. In the winter, the plants die back because of the cold weather. So having a few mussels in the pond will help clean up the algae because the plants aren't doing the whole photosynthesis thing and keeping the whole ecosystem nice. So a few mussels will help that. And they are freshwater mussels, obviously, not ones from the ocean. The winter garden really is quite beautiful. While I was introducing Mimi to our home, I spent a day sitting in the laundry shower room and it's a room that I haven't really got around to painting in a few years and it was definitely due for a makeover and sitting in there really highlighted that, that I really need to get in there and give it a paint. Most of my house has black walls in it, apart from the kitchen, dining, pantry room. It doesn't have any black in it, but most every other room does, except for one. So I decided to give it a paint. This is the room before, I'm just starting the prep work, and this is after. It's definitely more me now, and I feel like it's been brought into this century. My sister, Cian, who's over on Instagram at a Selvage Girl Inspired, she sent me the handles when I was sending her photos of my renovations. I have used this washing basket for 30 years. It's the only basket I used for my washing. 
I got this basket third hand and it was broken and I just cut the ends off and tied it down with zip ties to keep it together, the remaining bits that weren't broken, and it has lasted 30 years. I can only imagine how many plastic baskets I would have gone through if I had been using plastic baskets and how many would be in landfill now. I also added a towel rail on the door. I painted the doors black so they didn't stand out being white and also light switches got painted. You just do lots of light coats on them and let them dry in between and then they work perfectly fine and the paint doesn't chip off. The cupboard got painted black and I've put a little cover on it just so the cat doesn't scratch it. And on the sink, it's not a functioning sink as far as a tap with water. There's no tap with water there because it goes to the washing machine. And the wood that I cut down is to stop the cat from getting in there and playing in the water when the washing machine's on. I invested in a dryer once Nikki left and I just use that with the solar panels so it doesn't cost any money to run. And I don't have to be standing on a ladder hanging washing in the middle of winter or having washing drying in the lounge room. So there's no humidity in the lounge room. I know black's not for everybody and it's not going to be something you all like and that's fine because it's my house and I live in it and that's all that matters and I'm not thinking about the next people who live here eventually, what they like because who knows by then it could be a different colour anyway. Painting doesn't take long. It's I'm from I think seven or eight generations of painter and decorators and for us it is just a really quick thing to paint a room. It's not a big deal and if you don't like it you paint it another colour. So it's just the expense of the paint and I already had the black paint because obviously like I said a lot of my rooms are already black so I do have a lot of black paint. The apothecary room already has a black feature wall and I decided that I wanted to have three walls black as well because I loved the laundry shower room so much that I painted the apothecary room black as well. Most winter days are cloudy fog and it's horrible. So it's nice when the sun comes out, I quickly race out and do a few things in the garden. And today I've brought some of the ducks and chickens into the backyard so that they can eat any pests along the fence line. And that will help with the vegetable garden having less pests in the summertime. The snow peas, I need to harvest some of these. You can eat the leaves as well as the peas and the pods. And they're doing quite well and down below are the turnips. I've also got broccoli and cabbage growing, silver beet, garlic. Behind here are the chickens. Although they seem to be slacking off a bit. I make use of the many cold foggy winter days by doing crafts, baking inside, Today I'm making fire lighters with old material and beeswax. And winter is the best time of year to finally be using the alpaca fleece that was shorn in the summertime. I'm felting a shawl and it's quite an easy relaxing project to do with the fire going on an icy cold winter's day. Thank you so much for those of you who message me and leave comments and for the support that you give this channel and me. And for those of you who messaged while I wasn't putting videos out, just checking in with me and seeing if I was okay. I do have chronic fatigue, so I do have to rest a lot uh, and I'm still running the homestead and I have to do a lot on the homestead as well. So it was just, a time for me to take some time to myself. I thought I would take the winter off. It was just nice to go inwards and just do things around here. I mean, I was still doing the same things that I was doing when I do put videos out, except that I just wasn't talking to the camera. And yeah, and I was just getting this place set up for being an empty nester, which is a whole different thing that happens. You start to downsize a little bit especially in some of the cupboards. Um, who knows, my kids might come back. They, Nikki's been away for two years before and come back, so you never know um, after uni what she's gonna be doing. She's got three years there, so 
she's doing quite well there and she's settled in and yeah she's doing quite well so that's really exciting and Damon's going well and yeah that's pretty much what's been going on in the homestead and I'm really looking forward to putting more videos out each week and catching up with you guys I'm still trying to work out Instagram. It's changed so much since I've been on there. It used to just be photos and I loved it, but now it's just a lot of noise. Every time I scroll through, it's like, oh, videos and people talking and it's very exciting. And um, I'm not really sure what I'm doing over there anymore. So I haven't really put much out there in a long time either. So I will see your comments. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.